Hello and welcome. The arrow detection process for the arrow detectors I worked on so long ago has been greatly simplified by things like the wooden pressure plate detecting arrows and wooden buttons doing the same thing. But now that we do have wooden buttons, there are a bit more complicated things we can actually do with them because they aren't simply placed on a single part of a block. They can be placed on four parts at, at max. And so each one of those four buttons can be used to detect a single direction. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Let's get started. So here we are in an example dungeon room, and this is essentially what your players would see if they walked into a room that you've built with one of these arrow detectors in it. We have the detector at the top, and I've elected to build a pillar in the middle, just for aesthetic purposes, as well as a little bit of protection, but the whole thing isn't absolutely necessary, and I'll get to that a little bit later. Now, to test it out, we can shoot out one of the sides, which has a wooden button on it, and our redstone lamp will activate on that side, showing that we've activated it. We can shoot multiple sides, and they will all light up, provided the redstone allows it. You can always prevent this from happening simply by using uh, a simple saved bit, and then using an AND gate to make sure that only one can be active at a time. Now, for many cases, you can just use a button or a lever or something like that to do the same thing, but, for example, if you wanted a monster arena in which the player had to stop and aim in order to change the way mobs spawn and you uh, didn't want them to be able to change them instantly and that sort of thing, this might be ideal for that sort of situation so that uh, the players would have to deal with the wave first before changing uh, settings or something like that. So the problem we're going to have to overcome is that buttons cannot activate redstone where they're at. Or they can, but it would be kind of bulky and the redstone would just get in the way and it would be very visible to the player. So what we can do is instead use these buttons to activate a block above the button and then use whatever that block does to influence another bit of redstone. That way we are sort of delegating the redstone signal to some other system rather than our button itself. So that system that we're talking about is a block detector, not a block update detector, but a block detector. You'll run into some problems with this, and the main problem is that if we were to turn on our block detector, and we were to, first I'm going to remove this so that uh, we don't have to deal with it, so I can demonstrate. You see the power is going to go through and activate our, uh, our lamp here. This is simply because a redstone repeater can power a block, and that can power a, uh, a bit of redstone on the other side, and the opposite is also true. We can send redstone through and then into this block, and then a redstone repeater can siphon that power out. Now the problem that we run into is that if we were to power a block vertically like so, and then I'll, I'll just use the torch instead so we can see it lighting up. If we were to power that block using uh, a piston to bring it up first, it's going to lock that piston in place. Now if I turn this off, it's going to stay locked. That's a bit of a problem because if the arrow disappears because this lever is representing the arrow uh, hitting the button and such, if the arrow disappears, it's going to stay like that forever. And uh, that's kind of a bit of a problem. So on the other side here, we've just used something that can fall down on its own. So we add some sand on the top, bring everything up a bit, and then the detector bit will work fine. And then, ever, er, and then uh, the piston down below isn't close enough to be affected, so that whenever it goes down, the sand falls down and everything is all right. Now, as for the arrow detecty bit, there is also some problems. First of all, I'll mention that it's possible to detect all six sides of a block, or it would have been possible, if you were to place a pressure plate at the top and detect that, and then you used a tripwire down below. Now the problem with tripwires is that you can't detect when shooting upward. So that's a bit of a problem. Otherwise, you would have been able to detect all six sides that way. So that's just one of the issues. It's not a really major issue, but you know it could affect your decision to use uh, this type of system if you need uh, six or so uh, detections. And the other issue is that while we can shoot on the bottom half of blocks to activate them, and we can shoot directly on the button itself, what we cannot do is shoot slightly above the halfway point, if I can actually hit above the halfway point, like, oh, I keep hitting the button. 
So if we shoot above the halfway point at any rate, it doesn't work. It's basically the opposite of the arrow detectors we had long ago, the particle-based arrow detectors and the optimized arrow detectors videos that I made and that sort of thing. So um, that's just something to keep in mind that you have to make sure your players know that they need to shoot at the bottom half of a block or directly on the button. Of course, when they see the button, they'll probably get that in the first place. So it's probably not a big of, as big a deal as it used to be with the old detectors. Now, the other issue is that if we were to shoot down below, we can activate the sides like so. And that's really great. You can activate them all individually. And that's a bit more user friendly in that regard. However, if you were to shoot in about the corner on the bottom like so, you can activate more than one at once. Kind of a problem if you only want the player to activate uh, one at a single time and you have sort of a selection process going on after the uh, hit is detected. So to prevent that, what I've done is I've just built up my tower. I originally had it as just stone fences and then I swapped out the last bit here after discovering that problem uh, with a full block just to prevent any uh, mishaps while also keeping sort of the aesthetic appeal. Now if you aren't worried about a full tower, uh, you can use a half slab like so to keep a minimalistic uh, protection. It'll still prevent players from shooting through uh, the slab and hitting the corner there to activate two at once. However, I do like having a tower like this for one good reason. It's that when players enter the room, most likely they're not going to be looking up. So you have to place something to get their attention and draw that attention upward to your detector. Now as for the detector, we can get to that now. I chose to keep the design fairly compact and simple so that we can turn everything on and off at once with a single switch, and we have such a switch here, and then we have the redstone underneath it that's controlling everything. Now I've done this at a bit of a cost. There is a bit of a delay involved because we have our redstone repeater after our redstone dust here. So whenever the redstone goes through this sand, it's first going to have to go through this repeater afterward and then down. If we had just used a repeater and then sent it into redstone, it would have then went uh, down immediately because it wouldn't have to wait for the delay of the repeater. Just something to keep in mind if you need an instant activation rather than uh, a one tick delay or something if you have a very, very sensitive uh, machine that you've built. Otherwise, it shouldn't be a problem for most uh, most cases, and it allows you to turn everything on at once. Now, if we were to place a block here to demonstrate, the power will go through this uh, redstone here, into this block, through this repeater, and then down onto this block, when, and it will travel down onto this final block next to our lamp. You definitely want to avoid the pistons as much as possible, because if we were to replace one of these blocks here with a half slab upside down, and then place the repeater on top of that half slab, it would certainly power this redstone and certainly power the lamp if we put it in a straight line, and it would definitely be more compact, but then we'd have the same issue that we had before in that the piston would constantly be active because the redstone would be right next to our piston. Just something to keep in mind. So to give it one final demonstration, we can shoot it like so, and it'll come on, and any other sides work the same. So that should be about it for this one. Um, if you want to check out some more information on the block detectors that I mentioned, because I haven't done many videos using them, you can check out my chest detection video. Uh, kind of useful, semi useful-ish until we get some more features and then you can also check out my Night of the Living Zeds map. It's a PvP map that I made for last Halloween and it uses uh, power conduits as one of its uh, mechanics. Otherwise, I will see you next time.